The NBA season only has a couple games left, so the playoff picture is starting to round into form. There are quite a few surprises regarding the seeding of a few teams, but as always, the top seeds will be looking to prove themselves as the teams to beat and make deep runs for the title. For today's video, those are the teams we'll be focusing on, and more specifically, we'll be going through the top four seeds in each conference, and we'll be determining if they are for real, legitimate championship contenders, or if they they are fraudulent pretenders at risk of being eliminated early by a lower seed. All of these teams had outstanding seasons, but realistically not all of them are built to go all the way. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but it also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. We'll start in the Eastern Conference, so first up is the one seed Boston Celtics who definitely land in the for real category. This one doesn't need much explanation because they've honestly been the only consistently good team in the East from start to finish. Not only do they have the best record in the East, but they also comfortably have the best record in the entire NBA by a comfortable 8 game separation and they're a whopping 15 games ahead of the next closest team in the East standing. Even if they're not the team that you think will end up taking home the Larry O'Brien trophy in June, there's simply no possible way to deny that they're one of the teams heavily favored to do so. They have the number one ranked offense in the league and the number two ranked defense this season, dominating on both ends of the floor. They've got a star studded starting lineup where all five guys can give you 20 points on any given night. Their additions of Drew Holiday and Kristaps Porzingis have proven to be perfect fits and with guys like Al Horford, Peyton Pritchard, and Sam Hauser coming off the bench spacing the floor, it's very difficult to find a weakness with this unit. They honestly should breeze to at least the conference finals with ease, then from there it's anyone's contest. Next up is the two seed Milwaukee Bucks who I begrudgingly also have in the for real category. I say begrudgingly because admittedly there isn't a whole lot to be excited about right now regarding this squad. They've lost four games in a row recently to some pretty poor competition including losses to the Wizards, Grizzlies, and Raptors, and on the year as a whole they've been an inconsistent team more so than most. The only reason they've been able to to hold on to the two seed in the East is because every other top team near them suffered some key injuries. With all of that being said though, the Bucks traded for Damian Lillard this year specifically to give them a boost in the playoffs, so the playoffs will be all that they've cared about and all they will be judged on. Last season they were eliminated in the first round by the Miami Heat because they struggled to generate offense when the game slowed down, having been ranked one of the worst at generating points in half court offensive sets last year, and while you can point out a lot of worrying issues about this Bucks team, they have indisputably improved on the offensive end of the floor. They are a top 5 offensive team in the league this season, and the third best team in the East scoring in half court sets, which is crucial for playoff action when the game slows down. I still don't love this team's issues on the defensive end, and I'm also the furthest thing from a believer in Doc Rivers outcoaching his opposition. But realistically, if anyone is going to give the Celtics a run this year, it's going to be them, and they're going to need a big time showing from Damian Lillard to do it. Next up is the current 3 seed New York Knicks, and they fall into the fraud category. Full transparency, if they were completely healthy right now, they would be in the for real column, but Julius Randle's season just officially came to an end when it got announced that he was opting for surgery on his shoulder, and OG Ananobi has missed a lot of time due to injury lately as well. Ananobi is back on the court now, but isn't quite back to the level that he was playing at pre-injury, and with the clock ticking before the playoffs arrive, there's no guarantee he fully returns there either. At full strength after the trade for Ananobi, the Knicks were steamrolling everyone in their path, rattling off a stretch where they won 9 in a row and 15 out of 17, while their starting lineup in that stretch was posting the best lineup net rating in the NBA. But the team they have now going into the playoffs is not that same team, unfortunately. Jalen Brunson has been doing everything he can to keep 
them afloat, and role players like Dante DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, and Miles McBride are capable of stepping up, but this is just not a championship contender in its current state. Up next is current four seed Orlando Magic, and they too fall into the fraudulent category. The Magic are an amazing story this year, breaking out from the depths of rebuilding phase to establish themselves as a certified playoff team near the top of the table. But let's be completely honest with ourselves, this is not a team with the strength of a typical four seed. They took full advantage of the other teams around them dealing with significant injuries, and credit to them for doing it, but depending on the matchup they get in the first round, they may not even be favored to win that series, despite having home court advantage. The Magic have built their success on the defensive side of the ball, where they as a team rank as the third best defense in the NBA this year, and of course, I don't doubt their ability to lock up in the playoffs too, but the thing about playoff basketball is that experience and star power tend to win out, and the Magic are lacking in that department. Paolo Bencaro is well on his way to becoming an all-star caliber guy, but is not on the same level as the best players on other contenders yet, and overall the Magic are a pretty poor all offensive team. I'm going to keep emphasizing how important executing in half-court settings in playoff basketball is when the game slows down even more, and the Magic have the worst half-court offense of all of the teams in the playoffs this year, so I am all the way out on them. Now over to the top seeds of the Western Conference, we'll start with the current number one Minnesota Timberwolves who fall into the fraudulent category. I know this is going to sound harsh, but even though the Wolves have come a long way this season, the West is just too loaded for me to fully buy into them legitimately vying for a title this year. They're the league's best defensive unit in the league, so by no means will they be an easy out, and they've proven they can make life difficult for pretty much everyone in their way, but my concerns with them once again fall on the offensive side of the ball. Anthony Edwards is going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting for them, and while he definitely is capable of doing that, he's likely not going to be the best player in a meaningful series, and with Carl Anthony Towns dealing with injuries, the best case scenario is that Edwards' number two option is coming into the big dance rusty. Rudy Gobert has a notable history of coming up small in the playoffs, a lot of the rest of the roster has very little playoff experience at all, and the only only two playoff teams the Timberwolves are better than on the offensive end this year are the Orlando Magic and the Miami Heat, so they're at the bottom of the West. Next is the current two-seed Denver Nuggets, who definitely fall into the for-real category. The Nuggets are the defending NBA champions who returned their entire starting lineup from a year ago and once again are rounding into form at the perfect time. The road to the title goes through Denver, and it's honestly up to everybody else to prove that they can take this squad down. Nikola Jokic is a playoff riser coming off of a finals MVP campaign and is more than likely going to be named the league's MVP for a third time this year. Jamal Murray is another Another notorious playoff riser who consistently takes his game to another level in the big dance, and the supporting cast around those two play their roles and never stop moving and cutting, looking for easy baskets from their playmakers. They're one of just four teams ranked in the top ten of the league offensively and defensively this season, and they've proven that they have what it takes to win it all, so I have no doubts with them. Next is current three seed Oklahoma City Thunder, who I have in the fraudulent category. Again, this was a really difficult call to make, but in my heart of hearts, I struggle to fully buy into a championship team contender if they have damn near zero playoff experience. Shea Gilgis Alexander and Lou Dort are really the only two notable players on their rotation that have experienced playoff basketball before, and it came all the way back in 2020 during the bubble playoffs, which also wasn't even real playoff atmosphere. The Thunder check pretty much every box a contender needs to check both offensively and defensively. They're a young and hungry team looking forward to proving themselves, and on paper they should be able to make a deep run, but it's a lot easier said than done with a group of 20 year olds who may have the Phoenix Suns waiting for them in the first round, led by a roster full of players with championship experience. 
And finally, last up is current four seed, the Los Angeles Clippers, who I do have in the for real category. The Clippers have been historically haunted by injury woes in the past, but at full strength, this year's team is hungrier than ever to make a deep run that they've seemed destined for years to make, and with James Harden running the offense, they've looked like a group that can do just that. Of course, Kawhi Leonard is currently dealing with some knee soreness, so they haven't completely escaped the injury concerns, but it seems more like the games he's missing are for precautionary purposes with the playoffs right around the corner, and he should be good to go when it matters. They've also been rounding into form right at the perfect time, winning games recently against the Nuggets, Cavaliers, and Suns in the last few weeks. The Clippers are the third best offensive team in the NBA this year, and the best ranked offensive team in the Western Conference, because for years they've been missing a floor general playmaking point guard, and this year James Harden has provided exactly that and more. The worries of Harden melting down in the playoffs are always there, but now he has guys like Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Russell Westbrook, Norman Powell and company to pick him up when he does. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below which teams you think can realistically win the title this year. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.